Hello viewers, this is Dr. K. Ratchekar here. In today's video, we are going to discuss about new space policy. This policy was in the news as Indian government has approved this policy to enable and encourage and develop a new commercial presence, a more you know, growing commercial presence in space sector. Let us discuss few important aspects of this policy. First of all, beginning with why do we need a space policy? What actually led to creation of this policy? If you look into the global economy, which is valued roughly in last year, about 360 billion US dollars. Whereas India's share here is only 2%, roughly 7.5 billion dollars in 2020 and 2021 year. So whereas we are expecting this to grow to USD 13 billion dollars and by 2030 to even capture roughly 9 to 10% of the share in global space economy. But what is stopping us in uh, you know, capturing this? The major problem here is limited private sector role because we don't have too much happening from the private sector. Indeed, it has been limited as vendors promoting or you know, supplying few components for space research. So as such, they have a very limited role. Whereas in the world, we know about SpaceX like organizations. These organizations are greatly supporting space nations like NASA is getting help from the organization like this. And also we have seen space race where people are being sent into space using many private players. So why, why can't we do that? Okay, so providing a framework for that, India brought this new space policy. If you look into the major features of this policy, we are looking forward for a flourishing commercial presence in the space. Okay, because such activities would only allow the space field to grow. And we have seen in the past, because of the establishments that are happening globally as well as in the India, demand for the space sector, demand for space services have increased. So the goal is to capture that and also by promoting higher activity in the space sector, thereby reaching socio-economic requirements of the country. Okay, and also at the same time ensuring security because space can be used both for civilian purpose as well as for the military purpose. In a way, technologies can be used in an integrated manner to satisfy the both. Also, we have been establishing different organizations beginning 2019, okay, and identifying proper roles, strategizing these, their roles, okay, also has been done as part of the policy. And this policy clearly talks about non-government agencies, role of non-government agencies. Moving to a more industry oriented research and application derived research. Regulatory framework and support. In order to allow this to happen smoothly, transit smoothly, we need a better framework and support system. And this policy also talks about engaging many stakeholders including international collaborators. So these are the key themes that we are noticing in the new space policy. Okay, so strategy, the policy talks about the strategy that it is following as part of this. So the idea here is to encourage advanced R&D activities, advanced R&D activities in the space sector, more research and development in this sector. And also bringing public goods and services with national priorities. This is a goal of any development in technology to bring solutions to the existing national issues and space technology has been proven to be doing that since several decades now and a stable predictable regulatory framework as we talked about this is only possible by bringing a stable and a predictable regulatory framework and then promoting space related education and innovation so we can achieve this only through further education and also bringing innovation encouraging innovation like in the form of let's say startup companies Okay, so then space, we want to use it holistically as a driver for developing overall technology and also to nurture scientific temperament. Okay, logical and rational thinking. That attitude is very important and we want to bring that here by using space technology as a tool. Also to bring awareness on space activities in the country so we can appreciate that and also utilize where possible. This is a strategy as part of the space policy and I was mentioning several organizations have been established as part of this 
and those organizations have specified roles. Let us see what are the major organizations and what are their roles. We have Department of Space, this is the nodal agency, nodal department for implementing this policy. This is going to oversee all activities and implementation that is happening in this sector. Okay. Also we have what is called in space, Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center. In space which was established in 2020 is, has a role of both regulator as well as a facilitator they say. Okay, what is it going to do? It is going to promote, guide and authorize space activities. This is going to actually lead the game practically by promoting, guiding, even they, they talk about hand holding of these new organizations or private players here and authorize providing licenses to them in carrying out space activities. Plus they are going to time to time issue guidelines and bring proper procedures for implementing this. And including many other objectives, Improving the ease of doing business is one of the you know, outcomes that we are expecting through in space. Then we have NSIL, NSIL they call or New Space India Limited, New Space India Limited. Under in space this organization is going to commercialize the space technologies as well as the space platforms. So this is the organization which is going to directly work with the private players bringing technologies from ISRO and ISRO related organizations or organizations under Department of Space and providing these technologies to the private players and encourage private players to participate in many different roles, you know, many different activities in the space sector. So thereby creating the space based needs and catering those needs. Manufacture, lease, procure space components in space technologies as well as space platforms. So basically everything that is part of satisfying the space services are those that are in demand now. Catering all those through private players is what NSIL is going to do. Okay, so yes, continuing with the idea that what NSIL is supporting, with the help of NSIL, these private organizations or non-government organizations or NGEs are going to supply or provide end-to-end -end services, all aspects of space technologies, starting from, you know, designing launch vehicles, satellites to developing applications. All this is going to be taken care by private sectors, of course, with the help of uh, ISRO as well as those organizations we are talking about. Specifically, they are going to manufacture, operate space transportation that is creating launch vehicles, creating shuttles, creating uh, reusable launch vehicles to cut down the cost on launching process and to develop commercialize satellite technologies. So building satellites and also building applications on the existing or new satellites that are going to be created through local collaboration or even through foreign collaboration. On top of that, they are also going to participate in space tourism. Okay, where because I was mentioning space race has hap uh, is happening. We have been noticing that many private players are showing interest. Why not Indian players? So they are also going to have their own share in promoting space for tourism. Okay, so what about ISRO's role? ISRO, as we were talking about, you know, has not able to meet the demand of the growing services. And ISRO being established on an R&D organization, research and development organization, it will focus on this, the primary objective of the performing research and development of new technologies, new applications, that will continue. We are easing the burden from ISRO by providing this to private players. And ISRO will continue to develop more missions and uh, also human space flight uh, capability as part of Gaganyaan we are hearing. ISRO wants to you know, send humans into space and we want ISRO to focus more on such kind of activities. Plus on top of that enable open data access like remote sensing data that is highly useful to many sectors. Such data can be freely and open uh, and on open source platforms can be provided to the users. Missions on celestial prospectives, prospecting, so basically in ISRO will continue to work on the ideas related to exploring other planets like Mars, Venus we have plans for and also Moon. So further exploration, deeper understanding about space will be possible and even looking forward towards habitability, survival on other planets, you know, mining process on other planets. So a lot of activities are happening in this way and ISRO can focus 
on those things. Okay, so then uh, this is the overall idea about the space policy. What are the gaps in the policy? So if you're asked to write about critically discuss about the you know new space policy released by Indian government, what we see is of course it is a very forward looking policy, but we are missing certain time frames. When are we going to achieve this? When ISRO is going to transition from what it was doing? When, what is the timeline for in space to carry this out? Such timelines are missing here. Plus rules and regulations for uh, bringing FDI, foreign direct investments, and also for licensing, and to sustain the new space startup company. What will in space do if startup companies are struggling? Such things are missing. And what if violations take place? Okay, how are we going to you know, handle that? Such information is missing. What will be the appellate mechanism for dealing with the disputes is also missing. So these are the some of the very important aspects that are missing from the space policy, new space policy. Okay, so how, how are we going to address this? We are going to address that by having a proper time frame okay, for implementation and being able to check that regularly, whether we are able to reach that and what kind of changes are required. So continuous review and adaptation, time to time these things have to be changed so that they, they are implementable. Necessary legal framework in order to address those disputes we were talking about. On top of that, ongoing skill development and capacity building, what would allow to make it real? Because this document definitely is highly ambitious and is trying to push us forward, but we can realize that through by addressing these kind of issues. Okay, this is about space activity, uh, space uh, regulation and space policy. In the past, in 2016, we had a space uh, activity bill, but that never got through uh, the cabinet. So what happened here with the new policy definitely brought a new uh, interest and enthusiasm in the space research. Those people who are appearing for the mains exam, UPSC mains exam, this is a very potential question because of the reforms that are happening in India in the last two to three years. So in the view of how space technology bill, space policy has been designed, you can put into the context of how this is going to help India in developing or in meeting the future demands and where are we heading in the process and what are the shortcomings. Questions can be asked on this. Prelims also they can you know ask questions on uh, which of the following statements are true about the new space policy. What are the roles of different organizations? What is our major focus in this process can be asked. Hope this is useful to you guys. Thank you.